Thanks for being here with me today, YouTube. This is Michael J. Cat coming to you from the Burlington Studio Complex. Since Thomas Bruce has appeared on our radar, many have asked me my thoughts on Thomas Bruce possibly being the I-70 killer. Because there are similarities between the crimes of Thomas Bruce and the I-70 killer's attacks. Women were killed in the I-70 attacks. Women, it appeared to the suspect that were alone in the store at the time. He would walk in, shoot the lone woman dead with a shot to the back of the head, and leave. I-70 runs east and west and was an interstate that the suspect was likely used to driving, but there were no sexual attacks on any of these women. From Indianapolis, Indiana, through Wichita, Kansas, over 700 miles of interstate used, he just shot lone women in the back of the head and left. No sexual assault. No room for motive. I-70 killer is a thrill killer. Well, that's the first time you will ever hear me state someone else's words in one of my videos, as it appears that profiler John Kelly also believes the I-70 suspect to be a thrill killer as well. Him and I must talk one day, as I think that we see things in a very similar light like that. But in the show that John Kelly was discussing the I-70 killer, it was done in a reality show-like way. It never discussed the details I wanted. I don't like shows like that. That's why I don't watch television. But John Kelly does have his own YouTube channel and has given some good information there. Check it out. Anyways, the I-70 killer left no DNA or great amount of evidence, but what he did leave was shell casings behind in two of his attacks, the one in Indianapolis and the one in Wichita. Both had 22 centerfire shells left from the same weapon, which law enforcement believes to be a Scorpion Intratec 22. I believe he used the 22 to be silent, as not to draw attention to his location, so he could make a quick getaway, unnoticed by anyone without leaving anything behind to tell who had committed the murders. Thomas Bruce, on the other hand, has never been convicted of any crime as of yet. So I am answering these questions about him and the I-70 killer with speculation based off of facts in other cases. And I am not saying he is guilty of those crimes, but I do have Thomas Bruce under direct suspicion of the Delphi murders and heavy suspicion of the Iowa Evansdale murders as well. From what we do know of Thomas Bruce, he is charged with 17 charges, including first-degree murder, kidnapping, sodomy, armed criminal action, tampering with the evidence, and a lot more in St. Louis County alone. He also now has a sexual assault charge placed against him by a 77-year-old woman, also living in St. Louis. That happened back in September of 2018. Those crimes, we can say probably committed given what we know to be true in those cases. But I guess it's a must say that he is not guilty until proven as such by a court of law. I could go on from there, but you would not like it. You really would not like it. We also seen Thomas Bruce at a traffic stop where he was seriously drunk, slurring his words and not speaking correctly. He was never given a field sobriety test of any kind by State Trooper Cherry. The trooper never conducts the field sobriety test. Who I wish to point out was a young State Trooper. And I understand that your State Trooper, I have to understand that your young State Trooper. I want to point that out. So we know from this that Thomas Bruce drinks, gets drunk, and in St. Louis, we know right before the Catholic Supply Store homicide, he had just left a nightclub that was located next door. So we can assess the fact that he was most likely drinking prior to the St. Louis homicide. And given the fact that Thomas Bruce was a Christian pastor, it makes me seriously wonder what's inside this man's mind. We know Thomas Bruce gets drunk, and from this, he may then commit murder. Now, in the Catholic Supply Store homicide, he did commit sexual assault upon those women. He shot Jamie Schmidt in the head, killing her, after sexually assaulting the other two women. He then walked off, got in his vehicle, and left. He got drunk, then committed the homicidal crime. He was dressed like Bridge Guy, and looks like the Delphi sketch to a large degree. If it should ever come forth that he did commit the Delphi murders, then I would believe it may have dealt with him driving to his brother's house in Fort Wayne, Indiana, down the Hoosier Heartland route between St. Louis and Fort Wayne, Indiana, stopping at Monon High Bridgetail to stretch his legs, get fresh air, and hike. 
He was likely drinking, and after some drinking, got a courage boost, abducted two young girls, committed the crime, and then left their bodies right there by Deer Creek. He murdered two young girls in Delphi. Motive? Likely sexual, but unknown presently. Given the similarities and oddities between the Delphi murders and the Evansdale, Iowa murders, I suspect, minus hard evidence, but by motive and possible opportunity, that Thomas Bruce may be suspect in that case as well. On Friday, July the 13th, 2012, a date that if you reverse it will give you the exact date of the Delphi murders. If so, he was again traveling this time down Highway 35 uh, through Iowa, either northbound or southbound. Came to state grounds where he could park and relax for a bit. He was likely then drinking. And Evansdale lost two young girls that day. By whatever means uh, unknown, he gathered the two girls into his vehicle, murdered them, most likely sexually assaulted one of them, and then dumped them on state hunting grounds about 25 miles northeast of uh, Evansdale, Iowa, at Seven Bridges Hunting Grounds near a creek. Motive, likely sexual. Cause of death, unknown. Thomas Bruce, I suspect, drinks. His courage builds, and then he seeks a woman to sexually assault and murder. When traveling, and most likely for the reason of opportunity, he abducts children that are hiking at trails. In each case, both Evansdale and Delphi, I believe the fact that two girls were murdered in each case because girls that age don't go hiking alone. They have a friend or a parent with them. In each case, the killer had two girls to abduct to get his preferred victim. But in each case, both girls would die because he left both being completely unknown. The second girl is because he wanted the other girl. She just happened to be along, so was also murdered. Thomas Bruce has sexual motives against women. Women, 77-year-old, 53-year-old, down to 8 to 14-year-old. His motive isn't children. It's women, females, and alcohol fuels it. The I-70 killer, on the other hand, had no sexual dealings with his murders. He cold-bloodedly walked in, and when the woman was facing away from him, shot them right in the back of the head execution style. Both are serial killers, if Thomas Bruce is convicted, I say. But one is the thrill killer, the I-70 killer. The other is, actual, uh, is after sexual assault, then murder. Different motives, different killers, not the same person. But we do have a sketch of the I-70 killer and an older photo of uh, Thomas Bruce. Two different killers to me. Peace.